This meeting is being recorded. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here tonight. I'm Maureen Lepak, and I'm the chairman of the Board uh, of Health. The purpose of tonight's hearing is to hear from you, the residents of Brookfield, about any concerns or comments you may have about a local regulation that is being contemplated to be written by the board regarding noisome trade and related nuisances. I'm going to first walk us through a brief summary of the laws behind the regulation, along with some information on why it's being introduced. Then I will seek a motion to open the hearing. Tonight's hearing is the first step. Next, the Board of Health will consider comments, redraft, and conduct another public hearing before any final passage. So a few points to make. This, the template that has been provided is simply that, a template. It was obtained by the Mass Association of Health Boards and is available on their website, mahb.org. There are two templates that deal with this issue on their website, each having slight variations. And the only thing different here is that I have taken both, both lists of the examples and combined them into a single list for reference purposes only. It's not intended to be the final text of the document, and it's not intended to be an inclusive list. This information is being provided for educational purposes only. It's not intended to con constitute legal advice. So a little background. I want to make clear that this is not a new regulation. It's also not an additional regulation. The information in the template is already Massachusetts state law. The board is already required to perform everything that is laid out in the document with or without a local regulation. The authority of the Board of Health to respond to public health threats or emergencies is embedded in many different state laws and regulations. Most notably are those found in Mass General Law Chapter 111, which includes more than 250 sections. All the template currently does is reiterate what is already state law in a way that would be more evident to anyone living or operating a business in Brookfield. Within Chapter 11, 111, there are three key sections that are relevant to tonight's topic. Section 31 enables boards of health to make reasonable health regulations and importantly preventative regulations to protect public health and safety. Sections 122 to 125 deals with regulations relative to nuisances. It directs the Board of Health to examine into all nuisances which may, in its opinion, be detrimental to the public health and directs the Board to remove or prevent them and states that the board shall make regulations for the public health and safety relative thereto. And section 143 deals with certain types of trade or employment attended with noisome and injurious odors. It includes assignment of such places, prohibition, and appeals. So noisome trade refers to commercial or industrial activities, which may result in a nuisance or be harmful or detrimental to residents or their estates, dangerous to the public health, or may be attended by noisome and injurious odors. The law states that these businesses shall not be established in a town except in a location as assigned by the Board of Health after a public hearing has been held, and such Board of Health may prohibit the exercise of those not assigned. Noisome and injurious odors, so what does that mean? This is simply not an odor that you don't like. It means that it has a component that is harmful or detrimental to health or noxious. And to be a noisome trade, it has to also be in connection with an industrial or commercial activity. Section 143 further states that notwithstanding any prohib provision in section 125A of this chapter, this section shall apply to the operation of piggeries. And this has con caused confusion for some. This section of the statute makes a differentiation between generally accepted farming practices that are exempted per section 125A from piggeries that are, do not follow generally accepted farming practices. For example, what is known as a factory farm. There are specific public health concerns associated with those types of facilities. The statute isn't always clear, but that's one of the biggest reasons why local regulations are enacted by towns. But it's very clear on this matter when you apply principles in public health. Farming that is conducted per our town's right to farm bylaw are exempted by the state. Farms are, farms are not noisome trades and generally accepted farming practices are not to be considered nuisances by law. 
Moreover, our state laws contain three different chapters which provide farmers relief from excessive regulation or nuisance complaints. In its simplest terms, this means that a farm-related nuisance, is, if, it, if it's brought before the board, the board must first determine whether the alleged nuisance is part of a normal, generally accepted farming procedure. If it is, then the board cannot entertain the nuisance complaint, period. So why enact a local regulation? Unlike an abatement order directed by a particular activity, a local regulation operates prospectively, and it can be drafted to incorporate more objective standards to be used to determine when a violation has occurred. A local regulation may provide for the issuance of permits or licenses, may establish reasonable performance standards and requirements for businesses to follow, and may lay out any enforcement and penalty mechanisms allowed by the state. It can add additional exemptions, waivers, and grandfather language. These elements are not present in the state law alone. A local regulation also has the force of law. So long as there is a rational relationship between the regulation and the statute, there is a presumption that the regulation is valid. A local regulation on noise and trade is not intended to restrict personal use of land or even prohibit any business in town from operating. It outlines the oversight by the Board of Health for certain types of businesses that may have a potential to harm or be detrimental to public health. Most businesses are not considered noise and trade. Most businesses do not pose a threat to public health and safety, but some do. It doesn't mean they can't exist, it just means that they need to be permitted by the Board of Health much in the same way that a food establishment is. And while Section 40, 143 states that fines may be levied in the amount up to $1,000 for nuisances from noise and trade, it does not provide any specific guidance. It is not a requirement. Local regulations enable the town to define a schedule that is best suited to the town. Local health regulations are intended to be prospective. Local health regulations help create mutual understanding and awareness of necessary requirements to provide clarity in the process in much the same way that our general bylaws and zoning bylaws attempt to do. This helps both the board and the residents as well as business understand what is expected. So thank you. Um, do I hear a motion to open the public hearing? I make a motion. No. I make a motion to open the public hearing at 7.07. Do I hear a second? I'll second the motion. I'll second the motion. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Okay, um, I'd like to now recognize Mr. Gilmeister as our hearing officer. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming out and participating in this, uh, in this hearing. Um, so we're gonna take testimony uh, anybody that wants to come and speak uh, can come up, but we need to abide by some rules that uh, you should have gotten a copy of the rules. It's a one-page document uh, at the at the uh, at the t at the sign-in table. Um, if you do want to speak this evening, you should have signed in and perhaps indicated that yes, you were going to speak. If you didn't indicate yes, I'm going to speak um, at, at the tail end after everyone has, has spoken who has said they want to speak, uh, you can then, we'll give you an opportunity to speak. So this is not something that we're not trying to shut you down or anything. We just, we just wanted to get a sense of who wants to speak, okay? Uh, so I'm going to read the rules just so that everybody understands, you know, what we're doing here. Uh, so starting with number one, you can follow along if you'd like. Uh, the hearing officer will call upon members of the public who have signed in and indicated they wish to testify before the board. When your name is called, come to the microphone, which is right up there, um, to provide your testimony. Uh, if you would like to testify and have not signed in, as I've already indicated, uh, then you just let me know or you know, sign in up, up back uh, and, le and let us know that you'd like to speak. Each member of the public will be given a chance to speak once for two minutes, and I do have a timer. Uh, if the members ask a question of the board, uh, the answer is counted in the two minutes. Okay, and so what I'd like to do is just give you a sense of what this timer sounds like, so you'll understand uh, what happens when it when it uh, when it goes off. If I can actually figure out how to do that, my apologies. 
Yeah. There it is. That'll be it. And once that sound goes off, I might give you a couple extra seconds if you're still in the middle of a sentence to finish your sentence, but that'll be the time for you to stop speaking and go and take your seat again. Um, all right. Testimony must be directed to me, the hearing officer, uh, and the board. The board is here to listen to what you have to say about what they're proposing to do. Uh, each testifier will state their name, their address, and any pertinent, pertinent affiliation before speaking. Testimony should be limited to the topic of the proposed regulations, which is basically the noise and trade regulation, that the template that you, that you have before you, and that was just explained to you. Uh, rude, disrespectful speech will not be tolerated. Uh, this includes remarks attacking character of an individual, including statements that someone has an agenda or ulterior motives. Applauding, cheering, booing, or other expressions of approval or disapproval are not permitted. So please, if you like what somebody says, uh, you know, I don't, you know, just don't clap or say yay or whatever. Um, uh, if you go to hearings up in Boston, it's, it's hilarious. They have these things, they'll, they'll do this, or you know, they'll snap their fingers. Please don't do, you, you, certainly if you wanna raise your hand, you can go ahead and do that, but you know, whatever. It's sort of comical to actually watch it, but please, no cheering, applauding, or otherwise. Fail, failure uh, to comply with the rules may result in being escorted out of the hearing, and we do have some police officers in the back of the room uh, that if you get out of order, uh, will probably ask you to leave, uh, and they will escort you out. So please Please uh, just, just um, state your piece and that's what we're here for. We're here to listen to what you have to say. Board members will refrain from engaging in dialogue with those in the audience. The purpose of tonight's hearing is to hear from the public. No decisions will be made with respect to the proposed regulations this evening. So no decisions are going to be made tonight. Uh, all we want to do is hear from you and that's it. Um, testimony will be taken up to 9 p.m. Uh, if there are still members of the public who wish to provide testimony at 9 p.m., the hearing will be continued on December 13th if that's at all necessary. Otherwise, uh, the hearing will be closed by a motion that you just heard to open the meeting. It'll be similar to closing it. You can, if you wish, uh, submit written testimony to the board uh, in writing by Friday, uh, November 17th, written testimony must include your name and address in it so we know where it's coming from. Uh, you may either mail your written testimony to the Board of Health at 6 Central Street, Brookfield, or uh, you can drop it off uh, at the Town Hall. Are there any questions just with regard to the rules? Did somebody have a question? Okay, good. All right, so uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm just gonna start calling off names of people who signed in and said that they wanna, said that they wanna speak. I'm not sure if anybody else has, maybe one of the board, of the board members may wanna walk back to the table to see if anybody else has signed in. Um, so the first person that has um, indicated, uh, and I'm just, I'm just going by the list here. I'm not picking any order whatsoever. Uh, uh, David Fromm, is David here? Good evening, Mr. Moderator. Oh, I'm not the moderator. Ah, address me. I know, I know you, yeah, I mean, you address me. I just want to make it clear that I'm not here as the town moderator. <laughs> two minutes, two minutes starting Two minutes, now. yeah. Good evening, Mr. Chair. So we've been called three times now to this meeting and we've read about piggeries and pigs and painting and painting tractors and factory farms and all manner of things. Uh, imagine my surprise to read a posting on Facebook alerting us that it, it's not about farms or pigs. Uh, I, was, I found that somewhat surprising. It's actually, according to that posting, about cannabis. And I wanted to make the comment that um, when we when our elected officials tell us things are about something and they end up being about other things, that, that could be viewed as somewhat misleading. And in fact, there might be stronger words than that for it. I'm not going to try to find any. But I would say that uh, the idea that 
any sort of personal agenda might be introduced into our public discourse from our elected officials runs against my belief that our officials are our servants and not our leaders. And I feel as though we may have made a mistake in our last election, and it may be necessary okay, to have so a redo. Okay, so you need to speak directly to the regulations, past elections, Absolutely. have nothing to do with this. Absolutely. We need to redo the board. Thank you. All right. Uh, next, I got Bruce Clark. Bruce, I know you're back there. And on deck, if you want, we could move things along a little quicker. Uh, S Cindy Candler, if you want to just, you're, you're up next. So Bruce Cindy, Clark, if you're here. Bruce Clark, um, What happened to the planning board? We had a planning board for years. I sat on it. We reviewed, we, we went to public hearings as to drawing up uh, a synopsis of what this town wants to be. And a lot of it was, was laid out with some room for businesses, farms. It sounds like you're trying to do the same thing, but without the actual vote of the town involved in this. This is a public hearing. I do not believe you have to have the town's consent to adopt these regulations. Am I wrong? You're not. Board of Health is authorized by the state to enact local regulations that are reflective of the state statute without a public hearing. Our intent here was to not do that, to have a public hearing to ensure the public's voice. Uh, the planning board has a, is a, is, does exist, it has a purpose, um, but there's also a board of health and regulations related to public health, and this is one of those. Just seems to me you're, you're undermining the planning board in town, that's what it seems to me. They spent a lot of time developing a, uh, a planning package for the town. They, they still work on it constantly. It seems like you're putting in your own package. When somebody comes to Brookfield now, they're going to have the two major boards to go through to find out if their opportunity is welcome in Brookfield. If a business is going to the planning board, I mean, there's a possibility you could do joint uh, meeting, uh, public hearing to uh, cover both at the same time, but the what the Board of Health does um, with respect to citing a potential noisome trade is different than what the planning board does to issue a special permit. Like I said, they can actually, all right. I Cindy? I just thought it was a sign-up sheet. Okay, so, all right, fine. Um, next, I have uh, James Madison. James? My name's James Madison, I'm 56 Long Hill Road. My question is, is with the new ground rules that we may be taking up to, from the state, as far as when people are in, on, in compliance, how are they gonna, is it gonna be a standard fine for everybody, not just while well, this guy is, you know, he's, only slightly in heat, so we're only going to give him, say, $50 a day for not being in compliance, or is it going to be, well, this guy is in really bad compliance, so he's going to be at the $1,000 a day. We, there needs to be something where it's set, dead set, this is what your fees are going to be, there's no politics played in it, no variances played in it. Um, I just don't want it to be where I'm not saying people are being favorite, they, they could be favorite, I just want it to be a level playing field for everybody concerned. You know. So uh, that is definitely a schedule that the 
the board can set. Um, it certainly should be fair to all and equivalent to all. Um, just because the state says that we can find up to $1,000, um, I can't imagine why we would pursue a, you know, the full fine for a first offense or something like that. Um, but the board will have to discuss that. Um, I did put uh, in the, well, the template that comes from MAHB does kind of show that there's, you know, a scale that can be followed, like $100 for first offense, $200 for the next, something like that is what's commonly done. Um, but it, it would certainly be up for discussion by the board. I just want to make sure that it's a even playing field for everybody and that everybody is in the same, you know, same thing. If one guy is doing, say, <coughs> fixing cars, uh, fixing snowblowers or something like that, not as a business, he fixes them for his friends and stuff like that. I just don't want it to get into a position where you're running a trade. You so, know what I'm saying? Yes. Um, I know your time's up, but, but just to clarify, this is about like industrial use or you know commercial use, and personal use is not c considered in this regulation. So. Okay. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. Next, I got um, uh, John Washburn. My question, my question is that I'm, I'm John Washburn from 12 Maple Street, um, and my question is: is the businesses smells, and is this part of the regulations and stuff like that for businesses that are that like propane smell or, or uh, we'll say, um, I mean, somebody's chickens or something like that. Somebody besides somebody else or something like this is is outrageous and it's and it smells atrocious, or is it or something like it just? minimize or something like that. This specific regulation deals with businesses. It is not applying to keeping of animals or uh, any kind of um, personal private nuisance that you would encounter. So this has to be in conjunction with a business. So a nuisance that's caused because of the activities at a business and those noisome uh, in injurious odors would be as a result of that business's operations. So if we have a problem with the smells and stuff, we come to the board for this? You can always approach the board whenever you have a complaint. Okay, thank you. Pat Washburn. You all set? I mean, do you want to make a, is that it? Yeah, pretty. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, that that what's that? I do have one question. <clears throat> Patricia Washburn, Twelve Maple Street. My my question is: is this applies to noise as well as odor, or um, a, a, as well? Is that correct? Yes, it can apply to, uh, okay. noise can be noisome, yep. Okay, so if someone is you've got a mechanic shop and they're out there and they're revving the engines and, and um, or they're out there at late at night running equipment and, and um, you, you know, on, on a weekend night after working hours, that would be considered a nuisance as well? Uh, that can be a nuisance. It may not fall under noisome trade nuisance. Well, um, it, you hear the beep, beep, beep at 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock at night. That is considered in, in a commercial area. Yeah, that, that would be a nuisance for sure that you could approach the board. It may not be a business that's considered a noisome trade. Uh, there are, the state does have uh, laws in place. The DEP um, has laws in place about excessive idling. Um, and then you certainly could come to the board if you had a nuisance complaint around um, you know, excessive beeping at a, a late hour that, you know, was at a decibel that was, you know, intolerable and it was causing you injury or the inability to enjoy your property. And you can always go to the Board of Health for that. But that particular um, activity may not 
fall to being considered a noisome trade that ha that business has to be cited by the board simply because they use trucks because that's 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 something that almost every business uses we're generally talking about industries that are making you know they have like making chemicals they have a potential to poison water or poison air or you know uh, their workers may be subjected to cancer causing uh, agents like you know if you're looking at the automobile um, paint shop can I finish or yeah yeah so if you're looking at the, an automobile paint shop um, those ca paints have ingredients in them that are known carcinogenic ingredients and so the board citing it is basically giving a permit to that uh, company they would um, have to be inspected the, they'd check for the the ventilation make sure the workers are able to breathe clean air um, and that the that they're not exhausting that um, those chemicals into the atmosphere and things like that so that's that's the gist of really what we're talking about when you're dealing with the noisome trade regulation thank you okay so um, that's all. That's everyone that has stated. Uh, Mr. Chafee. Unless I signed incorrectly, I did sign to speak. Oh, okay. Well, then come on up. What's that? Richard Chafee, Town Farm Road. So initially, I was at the Board of Health when I first heard about this. And then Chris sent me a copy of the draft that was coming forward. It was somewhat alarming because it talks about cubic yards of dirt. I deal with a lot of dirt almost every day of my life. So I just want to be clear. It's not for residential. It's not for a septic system. It's not for a pool or landscaping. It would be a large commercial endeavor. Is that accurate? Yes, if you apply public health principle to the activity and ask the question, is this going to be a threat to public health, installing a septic system improves public health. Um, building a home puts a roof over someone's head. You know, doing okay. industries like that, that, those are not considered to be risks or threats to the public okay. health. So I have more, so I want to cut okay. you off, sorry. So. <clears throat> Mr. Clark talked about the planning board and their function, and, and I think we have a great plan, planning board, but I can't see a single business in town that would be affected by this. However, if a business did come in, let's say an asphalt plant on Route 9, that would be allowed by our planning board, but I think we should have some oversight because I wouldn't want to live near an asphalt plant and the smells that come from that. Because we don't have a specific area set up for an industrial area, that asphalt plant could go in the middle of a housing district on Route 9. Doesn't mean they can't do it. It means it would be another level, level of oversight from the Board of Health. I think it's a good thing. I'm not for regulation. I voted against regulation in 1988 when it came to Brookfield. I don't think this has anything to do with someone's rights on the property other than a large commercial industrial endeavor. That's correct. I welcome it. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Richard. It, 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 it was actually blank. So it's, it's on you, buddy. It's on you. <laughs> no, there wasn't. No, it was blank, man. You just like blanked it, dude. Sorry. <laughs> um, let's, just, let's just see if there's anyone else that wants to make a comment. You are only allowed to speak once. Um, so I, uh, I Mr. signed the sheet. I Mr. put yes on Mr. it. Mr. Holcraft. Yeah, I put yes on it. I definitely want to speak. Well, here it is. You see it? It's is blank. there a yes on it? It's blank. And I put a yes on it. It's blank, dude. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Dave Holcraft, 26 Allen Road, 17 West Main Street. Um, we're all here tonight basically because we got a fraudulent orange letter in the mail. Um, it's a fraudulent flyer that came um, out. It's a fraudulent letter that came out. One, one second. Shut what? the timer off, please. Oh. Yes, I will. Sorry about that. 
you. I'll make sure you get your time. Thank there. you. Okay, so um, I, you do need to be careful uh, about fraudulent making statements of that nature. Didn't um, mention any names. Uh, I understand, we but all you're know implying. Who it is. <clears throat> but you're implying things. Okay, so please refrain <clears throat> from talking about things that are fraudulent. You could say I don't believe it's true. You can, you okay. know, but whether it's whether it's whether yeah. it's fraudulent or not is is a whole nother level that I think you have to be careful. You can say you don't believe it, uh, or you can point out maybe some inaccuracies of whatever it is that you're seeing. I have no clue okay. what you're talking about, but I just just be you know don't use the word fraudulent. It's think not of true. Ways None of it, most of it's not true. Then think on the of red the flyer. ways that there you go. All right, the okay. orange flyer was I'm not resuming. true. Um, most of the stuff that was on the orange flyer is not going to affect any of us in this room tonight. You can have one pig or 30 pigs. No one's going to say anything to you. If you want to paint your tractor in the backyard, nothing's going to change tonight. This is about commercial, industrial businesses. We need some kind of a guideline here. And I'm not for regulations, and anybody who knows me will tell you that. But we're going to have some kind of guidelines, like Mr. Shafee said. What if I was going to put a piggery down on Lake Road and have a building put up, and they got 100,000 pigs down there, whatever? How do you think Old Chem Farm's going to like that? I don't think they're going to like the smell. Okay? So, and also in that orange flyer, they're going to come on your property and seize and destroy your property? Come on. Let's get with this, people. This is all bogus. This is about industrial commercial regulations with a little guideline. Actually, the health board is trying to help us out as residents, not hurt us. What happened here was we got that flyer in the mail and everybody freaked out. And they should have because it's false. It's not true. And this is just strictly for commercial industrial endeavors. And we do need that. I mean, you can look at, the, look at a couple of situations we have in town now. So don't panic. No, you can have your 10 pigs. Paint your tractor, you can do anything you want. No changes are going to be made tonight or when they make a decision. It's strictly for commercial industrial businesses. So let's get with it. Pay attention. Thank you. That was the longest two minutes of my life. Yeah, well, maybe you need another two minutes. He had five seconds to spare. It's totally unusual for him to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, again, I've gone through the list. Is there anyone else that thought they had signed up to testify that would like to testify? It looks like we got someone coming forward, perhaps. Uh, uh, maybe not. Uh, is there anyone, anyone else that would like to come forward and, and provide uh, the Board of Health? with some feedback. Okay. Uh, if you can just, yeah, just wait for him to be done and then, and then you're good. Sorry about that. That's fine. Yeah, so my name is Anthony Darlington. I live on 33 Town Farm Road. Uh, the gentleman that just spoke earlier, uh, he's correct. Uh, I was here because of the orange flyer. But I was saying that you shook your head though. So my question is, is what do you disagree with this exactly? What I, dis what I disagree with is that if you read um, Ms. Lepec's email to the Agriculture Commission, she explicitly says, if a person has one pig as a pet, they can be, de they can be determined as to be a nuisance. This doesn't just go for commercial businesses. This goes against people's own personal property. Okay. I can make a correction to that. It could be a nuisance, but it could be a private nuisance. So technically, yes, a person could own a pig and not take care of the pig. The manure could pile up and then suddenly they're a nuisance to their neighbor. And those things happen all the time. But as far as this regulation is concerned, a noisome trade is industrial commercial use. A piggery in that sense from the state is in connection to commercial piggeries because the state explicitly exempts all agriculture practices that are generally accepted from being considered noisome or nuisance. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So, um, and I guess my last question here is on Section 5 Enforcement, 5.10 here. Um, is this stating that you guys wouldn't need a warrant to enter someone's private property? No, all, all the regular um, 
constitutional rights of citizens have to be followed at all time. Okay. You don't have, you cannot be subject to search and seizure without a warrant. Um, you don't have to allow somebody to come onto your property. But, you know, you in, if there was a situation with a nuisance um, related to a noisome trade, you there probably would be a court uh, situation. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Hi, good evening. I'm the uh, Will Rogers, owner of Rogers Farm on Southbridge Street in Warren, and I do own property in Brookfield. And I just want to make a statement that operating the dairy farm, we have more regulation than you can shake a stick at from FDA, Mass Department of Ag, other agencies who are currently in my farm monitoring everything I do, testing my milk. And I don't see any reason for anything oversighted to come in and add to that weight that I bear. And I would like to know if there are any examples of anything going on that warrants the attention to this matter in the town presently. That's just my question. Um, first, the dairy farm is not subject as a noisome trade um, because you're doing agriculture and it's generally accepted practice that you're doing. The second thing is there is no, I, I can't even think of a noisome trade now, but what the town has been historically reactive in dealing with issues. Um, if a business comes to town, it gets, you know, goes through planning or zoning and then uh, is operating and then the board is then dealing with the fallout complaints after it starts operating and so this is just to be perspective uh, it's not intended it's again it's not a new regulation it's not even adding um, anything to the current regulation all it's doing is taking the regulations that are peppered throughout the statute and putting it into a concise easy to understand um, framework so that it's documented in the town, people are aware of it, businesses when they come to town, because they may, you know, 20 years from now, we could have a very different Brookfield if, if you know, things change. I mean, I've seen it happen. I grew up in a town very much like Brookfield, and it came became very uh, grown, overgrown over the years. And, and so if you're... Um, trying to be prospective about it, you, you want to put something in place so that everybody knows what the playing field is. All right, thank you for your time. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Please state your name and... Philip Merriam, 22 North Brookfield Road. Uh, is there anything broke? Can you clarify that? Is there anything broken? The old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, I, I get that. Um, it's still a state law. We're still required to enforce um, simply having a, a local regulation to allow people to know what's expected. Um, you know, it's not any different than what's already out in the state statute. I guess I have something to say back to you. Do you guys enjoy our um, farming community? That's my question back. Do you want to keep Brookfield, the beautiful right to farm community that we have, or would you? So I, I'd, I'd like to I'd like to remind the board of health member that um, that's probably not something that you should be doing. Um, I mean, one of the rules that we have here is that board members will refrain from engaging in dialogue. Uh, blah blah blah. So I, I I think it would be better, you know, uh, that that left that, that's left unsaid. Uh, okay, I saw the guy in the green. Oh, he says you're closer, so you can get up, and then you're next. Okay. All right. My name is Mark Mitchell. I live at 7 Merrick Ave in Brookfield. <clears throat> and my only question is, everything we've got here are drafts. And we keep hearing about how this can be changed and that can be changed and everything else. Why don't we have at the next meeting, the Board of Health get together, work together, and come up with something to present to us as a town and then we can make a informed, legitimate decision as to whether or not we would like to see that happen. 
Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that question as well. Um, the point was to have a, a draft using the template um, available so that we could get public input. Then the town, um, the Board of Health does not have um, bias already introduced into their um, drafting of the regulation. They can take the uh, input from the town members into play when they're drafting the document. Um, once we have a fully drafted document, they and we would definitely hold another public hearing to get any further input on that document before we decide whether or not we're going to enact it. Um, and so I, I just want people to understand this is a process and this is the first step of it. And if you remember bringing the right to farm bylaw into town, that was a two year process for, for them. It took a lot of meetings and, and thought and discussion and we want to get it right. We don't want to put something in place that's going to be unfit for the people in this town or to make it difficult for them. We want to make sure that there's a fair and balanced um, regulation that benefits Brookfield in its own character. Uh, if you look at the state statute, it, it can be a little vague. It's, it's a one-size-fits-all for every town, whether it's Boston or Brookfield. So we want to make sure we, we look at the different sections that we could add to the regulation to um, in, increase the, uh, the, the benefit to our, our town and our town's needs. I like to raise a point of order at this time. Uh, yeah. So there really isn't a point of order, but point, I'd like a point of information, a clarification of, of our rules that we we established. Because as we just witnessed, that there, we said that there's not to be dialogue between the board members so, to the public. And so uh, that, okay, that. so but there was a question that was asked, and she was answering the question, so that was legitimate. You're up. You, you understand what, what I'm saying, right? There was a question that was asked, and she was answering the question, and so that's that. Tom Regan, 6 Mockingbird Lane. Um, uh, through you, Mr. Hearing Officer, the, uh, to, the, uh, to the board. Um, do I understand correctly that the Board of Health already has statutory authority through Mass General Law uh, for regulations um, of trades of this nature, and that this is simply making them making things Brookfield specific? Yes. Okay, uh, thank you. And I'd like to follow that up with, um, uh, as I understand it, um, what are the, uh, in the general law, what are the measurements that, by which something is deemed to be either noxious or noisome or to be um, a threat to health or something like that? I'd, I'd like to understand the, the objectivity and the subjectivity there, if you would. There, it depends on what you're, we're dealing with. I mean, if it's a sound, you know, there's certain decibel level limits that the DEP sets forth. Um, there's definitely a lot of information in the DEP regulations that would, um, you know, odor's very, a little more difficult to measure, um, but they do have guidance in that. And, and one thing that I didn't say that I would like to make sure is mentioned is that once we um, put together and vote on a local regulation that would go to the DEP for their input and comment and they are obliged also to give us advice during the process so um, they would definitely be part of the discussion to help um, if we were going to put some sort of reasonable stand performance standards in place they would have input into that and, and be able to assist us to make sure that it's it's um, applied in in a fair way thank you yeah. Anyone else have a comment? Go ahead. <coughs> Shelley Greenlees, 25 Brookfield, 25 Central Street, Brookfield. Um, so I just wanted to make um, a little general statement of this regulation as I can hear some of these people want it, some of these people don't. Um, I have no opinion whatsoever. I don't farm, I don't follow politics. However, it sounded like from the beginning of all this, the public wasn't going to be included in some of these decisions and even knowing it happened. Were it not for that orange flyer, whether it be true or not, 
we wouldn't, me, I wouldn't have known this regulation was even taking place. So I kind of welcome the fact that that flyer went out because it brought us all here to this meeting so that we can be part of the discussion. We can drive our opinions into this, this regulation. Um, I did have a question about the regulation though. Um, once it's invoked, we may not have some of these businesses here Could you already. try and get a little, there yeah. you go. So we don't have these businesses here already. It, will this regulation allow the city or the town to say, no, you're not coming here? Or would it just let them abide by the rules once they're here? The, the statute does allow for uh, prohibition of a particular type of noise and trade in the opinion of the board. Thank you. Um, also, um, I know it doesn't affect personal private properties, things like that, it's all commercial. However, I assume that there is going to be, that, that if, if we all had issues, we come to the board for a private issue as well as commercial, so outside of this regulation, correct? Right, we, there's already sanitation code um, from the, the state and we have that followed and the enforcement for the board is conducted through a health agent and not through the board. The board is more legislative in nature and would vote on you know, a matter you know, before it, but um, most of it, any of the sanitation, any housing issues, things of that nature are handled through the health agents. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And thank you for allowing us to be part of the discussion going forward. And hopefully that continues with other regulations that may come forth. Thank you. Is there anyone else that, uh, that would like to testify, make a comment, ask questions? Now's the time to, now's the time to do it. Up back. <laughs> No, 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 we got, we got somebody coming. My name is Jason DeRoche, I live on Kimball Street. Um, the last meeting, I had spoken with you briefly, Maureen, um, and I don't follow Facebook, but something just struck me tonight. With the smell and you were talking about, you were very specific to one thing, and that was marijuana in town. You even told me that these two sitting next to you wanted to have that. Now I'm hearing that there's Facebook posts stating that you're against it or someone's against it. And with the lack of information coming out to the town, and again thanking this gentleman whether the facts are the facts, whether they're true or not, I would have had no idea. So it just seems more or less that you're honestly weaponizing the Board of Health by taking a regulation that's already in place by the state uh, I and trying to make it tighter. Just be a little careful, weaponizing, that's kind of okay. like, you know, um, I mean, Using uh, it for your own personal gain, then, because you may uh, not be happy with be it. Be careful with that. Own personal gain, that's, 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 that's okay. a motivation, uh, please. Then, it just seems that there's someone on the board that isn't agreeing with certain things and being very vague with a lot and not informing the town. Again, whether his paperwork was correct, whether your paperwork has fact on it, the whole fact that there is so much secrecy behind this meeting. So I, did, I, just a, wanna, a, I just wanna be clear, okay. Or clarification uh, I, of what is no, being spoken I, please, at the meeting. just is hold that, on a moment and let me explain something, absolutely. okay? Because I think we need to be very, very clear about this. Okay, there's a couple of different things that are going on. First of all, they don't even need to have a hearing to do this. They don't even need to have this tonight, okay? And the second thing is, they did put out a hearing notice for this. Okay. Yes. And it was, yep. I got the notice of this one. Okay. I had no idea. I would have not known of the original okay. one. I just wanted you to be aware that there was a. Yeah, I wasn't speaking of this. Even the particular. original one was originally, as it was originally proposed, was duly noticed. I just okay. wanted to then be clear. Okay. Then it was very vague in when it was going to happen, as far as I understand. Um, so no, I don't believe in taking a state regulation and tightening it up to make it fit the town or a whoever. Um, there's just, it seems there's a lot of backstory going back and forth that it is uh, more or less one-sided. I have one question and I don't know, hopefully I can ask it. There's three members on the board. Who's for it and who's against it? 
I'm going to be voting against it as it stands right now. And the main reason was is that this was presented to us in a draft form. We weren't even allowed to participate in the drafting of it. We weren't even allowed to say, hey, do we want this? Do we want to consider having this? It was immediately draft form. We want a motion for hearing. No questions. Not even allowed to finish the reading the draft. So I can't vote for something that, that, that was presented like this. The, the, the remainder of the board, the board can do whatever it wants to do. I'm um, just curious if it's uh, how many people, it's, it's three people, is it two people that I want it, is it three people that want it, is, you know, that's, that's all I'm asking right now. Because again, we go to, if you go to have jury duty, there's a jury of your peers. And generally if the, all the, you know, there's say all of them are saying the same thing, that's probably a good thing. Again, the conversation I had with her, she was very specific that two other people on the board had different interests. And in long term, this would affect certain interests. Uh, I'm keeping track of that. Thank you. That's all. all. Right. You, you are about up. All right. Thank you very much for your time. All right. Thank you. I'm going to respond, though. And I agree with the guy in the red shirt. You should be removed. Okay. Well. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll have no more of that. None. I want that to be very, very clear. No more of that. We have elections. And that's when you that's when that's taken care of. And uh, just a comment um, on my end, because I think there's been uh, statements made about secrecy. There's been nothing secret. Um, like I said, the, the initial draft is just a template. Um, the drafting. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, let, well, I, I, I mean, I, I was accused should, of. Uh, Madam Chairman, I, I would, not, I would not, I would, I would not go here. Okay. So I, he I, spoke about how he would vote, and you didn't allow the other board members. Oh. So. Okay. okay. So. Well, they were all asked. All right. So I want to be very careful here. All right, uh, because in the first instance. Um, there isn't any motion or anything. There's not even a proper regulation before the Board of Health to make a vote on. There's no motion. There's no nothing. The only thing that's here is for you to give your input as to what you think about these regulations. So far, I think, in my opinion, you folks have been given some very good information to the board to consider. Okay? but. Beyond that, the board is going to take up the deliberation on the regulation when it decides to do that. That is not going to be tonight, and so we're just going to refrain from doing that, okay? Now, is there anyone else that would like to make a comment with regard to specifically to uh, the, re the, the regulation that's sort of being drafted? Um, my name's Leah Moreau, and I'm at 130. Leah, Town uh, Road. could you, yeah, oh, get right you up there. Me? You're a very weak voice, and that's okay. That's okay, okay, but get to the microphone. So I own a farm. I own and operate a farm in town. Specifically, next year, we are looking to increase our pork production on our acreage. So how is that going to affect my farm? Also, clearing... We have cleared land to implement agriculture and to implement livestock. Is that going to affect me? Can someone put some, can the Board of Health cite me or how is that going to affect me? What is generalized farming practices and how is that considered? Generally accepted farming practices are normal uh, practices that you see with agriculture, spreading of manure, uh, tilling the land, tending to f keeping animals, including swine. So the state has a specific exclusion for farming and agriculture in the uh, law. So the board cannot um, cite you for noisome or, you know, you're not a noisome trade by definition and you can't be cited for a nuisance if you're following regular farming practices. Mm -hmm. Technically, farms that are not following those practices 
can create nuisances, right? There could be vermin and overpopulation of, you know, flies and things like that that become a, a, a problem. Um, that's not very common. But if that came, you know, if somebody re, uh, right. came so to So not the, very common, but would that apply? Not to this regulation. Okay. Um, that's just nuisance in general. That's a sanitation thing. That's when the agent comes out or the animal inspector would be called in that particular, you know, in the farming mm -hmm. sense. And is then there a would, limit of pigs? No. Okay. It's the use that is um, at play here. There's no, um, de there's no definition in the state specific to piggery, but when you when you minus the fact that farms and keeping of swine is included in their definition, mm -hmm. there's no acreage, you know, comment that's 61A. But if you look at that, um, you know that farming is exempted, hmm. and so when they when they say then piggeries, you're talking about what's more, more a problem down south. Um, if you go to like North Carolina and you see the, the, the big hog farms that they have and they have these open pits of, you know, um, it, man manure that's just c accumulating in an open pit and the animals can't turn around and they're inside and they're, they're pumping them with antibiotics which, is, which has created the um, drug resistant MRSA. That's what happens, um, but a regular farm would not be part of this. Okay. Is there anyone else that um, has questions or comments about uh, the noisome trade uh, proposed sort of thinking about? Yeah, I, the rules say only once. I, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, you know, I, I, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna go crazy with that. But is there anyone else? Can I just ask a question? Uh, Mary Fagno, Green Street, Brookfield. So you said that there was this well advertised or publicized that um, we got notifications of this meeting. I didn't get any notification at all. How would we notify? So, That's all I want to know. Is uh, what, so the, so the, the answer to the question is it was properly noticed. There are actually state laws that state how a public hearing is to be noticed. It's sort of like a town meeting. It's the same thing, okay? The town meeting is supposed to be noticed. That is to say, the public is supposed to have a notice, and there are specific things. Uh, I don't know what they are for this, but one of them is posting it up at the town hall. I don't know, what are the, what are the other ones, the, 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 Madam Chair? It uh, has to be posted in a, the legal section of a newspaper, at least, uh, uh, twice uh, in the 14 days before the hearing and the town hall has it posted on the um, the town website as well so you either have to be able to get to the town website or the paper that's to find the notification that's out. how all hearings are posted like it or not that is the way things are uh, and you know, unless we can change the state laws down at the state house to make a change in that, that's unfortunately the way that they are. Okay. And so, uh, if there's no other comments or anybody has anything else to say after tonight's meeting, then there won't be that public one on the 13th or whatever the de date in December was. Um, we're trying for the 13th, which would be our rec our regular uh, December meeting date. Um, the um, what was your first part of your question? I'm sorry. If no one else has any other comments. Okay, so we can accept in writing questions or comments um, up until we put the, the Friday before our, no, our, our second November date in as the deadline so that we can then, when we have our meeting in November, we can go through the comments and, and any questions. And just so another thing. Once they, okay, sorry, go ahead. Okay. So as far as tonight went, I mean, as far as what the turnout was up at the town hall, and what it is in comparison to tonight, I don't think that was very, it's not in perspective. And it wasn't very well, like a lot of people didn't even know how to get to the back of the school because they, they don't have children in the school or they've never been here or they're new to the town. So I got some phone calls from some friends. How do we get there? So I think that was also a problem. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Is there, is there anybody else? 
All right, I, let's go ahead. We'll, 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 we'll give you another two minutes, but that, that, that'll really be it. Well, you made me go first. <laughs> so, I didn't make you. Well, I guess you, I did. You, made I, me. You, you were the first one to sign up. Two minutes starts. That treats, that, yes. Yeah. No. Thanks. <laughs> Hang on. So I just want to All point right. everyone to Section 5, Enforcement 5.10. The Board of Health, its agents, officers, and employees shall have the authority to enter upon privately owned land for the purpose of performing their duties. Now, I was at the last meeting, and things have changed a little. There was a lot of talk about people with less than five acres, and that would definitely come under the purview of this new regulation. I want to point out that the Brookfield bylaw clearly states that anyone with five acres or under is allowed to keep livestock, and that is as of right. Every other part of town but the rural residential, you can get a special permit from the planning board, and this regulation would certainly trump the planning board. I think we already have established certain things in this town, and a lot of what we're talking about is going to trump boards that already exist, and we should just think about it. If we're really going to tailor this, if it needs to happen at all, and I don't really think it does, if it needs to happen, we need to be careful about the character of our town. We're not, no one's, no one's opposed to blocking rubber plants or factory farms, but they're already illegal. This is going to be applied to anyone who isn't popular. And I'm just going to end by saying it is a matter of record that at the agricultural meeting last time, the state inspector for, <clears throat> for a livestock made the statement that this all began because Mr. Mark Hammond's pigs trespassed on Ms. Lepec's property. Thank you. Is, is there any other, is there any other, any no. other comments? Um, I'm going to address because that's a false uh, statement. No, 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 no. Because you're interacting with, okay. you're interacting, well. you as the board can, can figure those things out for yourselves. Okay. Later. Uh, there's no need to debate that this evening. Uh, is there any uh, c comment? Al, oh, I let one in the door, now I got to let them all in the door. Come on. Fair enough. I, I am fair, Mr. Holcraft, okay? I mean, despite what you like to say about me, I am fair. Hey, I got to tell you tonight, you've done a good job. I, oh, my heavens! Yes. Will you put that on your yellow sign for me, please? No, I won't. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> hey, I, I just, um, people I have to understand that this these regulations are not for the average guy that's got animals, horses, or you're going to expand your farm. This is mostly for industrial commercial endeavors, just to have some kind of guidelines there for to protect us. It's not, you can go paint your tractor tomorrow, like I told you earlier, and go have 10 pigs. There's no one's going to, nothing's going to change, even after they vote, whenever they vote. It's not going to change. So don't panic, and it's, and we're only talking about the industrial endeavors. And I think we should uh, say a little thank you to the health board for looking out for us. And that's what we should be doing tonight. Thank you. Thanks, Chris, for flyers. He's a bogus flyer. Right. Okay. Hey. Hey. I don't like flyers. Uh-uh. No. Go ahead. Okay. Hi. Pamela Fitzgerald, Town Farm Road. Oh, we'll get right up to that microphone. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes. All right. Pamela Fitzgerald, Town Farm Road. So how do we know that when you guys tailor this regulation to me, our town, it's not going to leach into the private residential section or become a new regulation to restrict us more? We can only mirror the state law, and the state law um, on this topic is a definition of noise and trade, which means by definition employment. Um, it's, it's commerce, it's uh, industry. Um, if you wanted, some towns have keeping of animals regulations. Um, that's a completely different regulation. Um, the board can only make a regulation that mirrors and they can only make reasonable regulations. So we're not allowed to just go off and start making up our own, you know, rules and regulations. It has to be already something in the statute. And this particular regulation is laid out crystal clear, but it's in three different places. A lot of people aren't familiar, so there's a tendency here for people to think this is something new, that we're doing something different. We're already required 
to enforce what's being written here. It's already on the books. It's been on the books for many years. It's just that when we don't have a regulation in town that allows people awareness of it, then we're in a reactive state. Um, so I think the question was, um, how do we know whether this will get applied to, uh, a, you know, a, a private home where there's chickens out in the backyard or something, as opposed to this? And I, th I, pr I think you've answered the question, which is basically, uh, it's got to be a business with employees and and other c sorts of things that are determined uh, by by the by the law and and other sources. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. I mean, it, it can't apply to personal use. Does that answer your question? Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. We got until 9 o'clock. So I've come to several of the last town meetings, and I watched uh, a member of the board as well as a member of the audience. Um, be careful. I, I, it's, it's got relevance, in it, and it's to this specific thing. Uh, okay. So I watched the bylaws change regarding marijuana. I watched it be curtailed for marijuana. I've never seen a town curtail a bylaw the way they did this one for marijuana, but uh, I'm getting to the point. However, the biggest resistance I see is the people that wanted the marijuana. So my specific question to the board is, because Mr. Fromm wants to do the marijuana on his property, and Chris is on three of several boards in town let's, let's pushing little, for let's, the marijuana. Let, let's avoid identifying individuals and just, okay. you know, right. there are but entities. But I mean, it's happening and everyone can there see There are it. entities that want to do, okay. you know, so. So now the direct question is, will Mr. Fromm be able uh, to do his marijuana with this Newsom trade in place? So the question is, will someone that wants to uh, have a, a marijuana a business uh, be able to do that? I think that's the question. Yeah. Okay. There's no reason why he couldn't. It just this just just gives um, clarity on the oversight role of the Board of Health in making sure the siting of any activity that's done for cannabis is done um, so that there are protections in place for abutters. Chemicals. If like there's chemicals, if there's water, um, you know. Uh, issues or if there's, you know, um, you know, significant land changes that affects the he recharge. Owns, and, and he owns one of the largest bodies of land in oh, town, oh, so oh, okay. the uh, bodies that, probably uh, wouldn't be an okay. issue. The, okay, the time's out. Time's out. It is what it is. Jake Hill for Lincoln Street Extension. Just to clarify, um, earlier, you did say that this would give the ability to prohibit something coming into town, correct? Hold on, hold on one second. Um, I, I, oh, I just want to, please, no talking. We want to, we need to hear from here, yeah. and I'm, you're distracting, so. I, I just want to get the, tr the true information. What was just said was that there would be, it, nothing would stop him, but the board does have the power to prohibit it, correct? Yes, if, if he couldn't that's meet, all I needed to know. If Thank he you. couldn't meet the um, requirements or, or refuse to make, uh, make the requirements, um, then they, he could be refused a permit, of course, yeah. Okay, does that answer your question? Okay, all right, mm -hmm. there we go. Okay, are there any other, uh, any other comments or uh, anybody else want to testify here this evening? Okay. I'm usually I'm usually not a public speaker, but I'm going to ask a question. Uh, could you could you give us your name? Oh, yeah, Grimes, uh, Brook, uh, Gay Road in Brookfield. What is the difference between farming and farming cannabis? Why is that different? If I can grow corn, why, in this day and age, why wouldn't somebody be allowed to 
grow cannabis. Why is that different? The state has specifically excluded cannabis cultivation from its definition of agriculture. But why? I'm assuming it's because it's a psychotropic drug. Um, I, I, but I, I, don't, I think you I have to leave that you. to the legislature. They, yeah. They're the ones that did this and, and, and the people that authored the law, et cetera. So, uh, all right. Uh, any, 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 anyone else uh, want to provide some? You had, you had someone back there had their hand up or they were doing something. Oh, you were. Oh, I see. I see. You know, come on. That's okay. That's okay. Anybody else? You sure, uh, Madam Chairman? I think uh, I think that's it. Yep. Okay. So I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing. Or I, do I hear a motion to close the public hearing? Are we making a motion to close the, the public part of the hearing, or to close the hearing entirely? So this is a public hearing. All they're doing is closing this portion of it. Right, but it's not to stop but you guys from doing further stuff. Right, but normally in public hearings, we would close the public part for no more discussion from the public, and the board would have, would have its own debate. Are we doing that, or are we closing the whole hearing, and we're all going home? There was no intention to do debate tonight. Okay. So... Uh, I'll make a motion to close tonight's public hearing. Um, at 810. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're all done. Thank you very much for coming out this evening. We terribly appreciate you coming out. Thank you. Okay.